Hey people, my name is OCU KJ and this is my exclusive. <laughs> OCU UKJ was born in Lagos State, Nigeria. The second child of a family of three children nursed his interests at the end of secondary school, concentrating mainly on singing before beginning a career in acting from his first year at the University of Lagos, Nigeria, with a lead role in a stage play. His father, a caterer, and his mum, a staff of the Nigerian civil service, were ever supportive and he went on to pursue both music and acting, focusing on the acting on stage plays specifically for the first four years of his career, before winning the 2006 Amstel Malta box office reality TV show for actors. He began a full career with a merger of stage and screen. His first screen appearance, as directed by Izu Ojuku, was in White Waters in 2008 with the acclaimed Joker Silva and Rita Dominic. He has various awards to his credit, for example, the African Movie Academy Award for the Best Upcoming Actor in 2008 and the City People's Award for Best New Act in 2010. And in 2013 and 2015, he won the African Magic Viewer's Choice Award for Best Actor. Now, let's meet Osi Ukeje. When I wake up in the morning, I am Nigeria. When I'm brushing my teeth, I am Nigeria. When I'm eating my chicken, I am Nigeria. Hey, this guy! In the University of Lagos, I joined an organization called the Rock Foundation Mission. We decided we we're going to do a play at some point and they thought that I should play a lead character. And then, um, even though at the time I was not interested in acting, I was just like, okay, we'll just do it for the heck of it. And I did. And then when we staged it at the Muson, um, a big organization saw what I did, and this was in 99, saw what I did and asked me to join them to do another play, which was a bigger play. Uh, the organization was called Rhythm of the Black Man. It's a defunct organization now. And then 21st of January, 2001, we had our first outing. And that was my first commercial work. By my third year, I kind of realized that this was something that I had become comfortable with and I would love to do. And then people seemed to attest to the fact that they thought I was good at it, you know? Even though I was focusing more on music at the time. And then um, by the time I was finishing school, I was sure this was what I wanted to do and look after the baby at the same time. <laughs> And so when I was doing my youth service in 2005, 2006, um, I heard about Amstel Malta box office and I joined that. And off of that came the first movie, White Waters. And off of that came um, the awards, um, Africa Movie Academy Awards in 2008. All one man has known all his life is rejection. I don't know how I managed to cope with him all these years. There are parents who are bringing up children in worse situations. Blind, deaf, dumb, autistic. And they do not abandon them. They show them love, Paul, and love. You weren't there when he needed you most. Nothing but a loser. Life is ebbing out slowly. Life is full of impediments. And enemies will trample down your will and push you down the ladder of success. But you have to fight your oh, way back to the I am not a failure. The choice is his to make. Will he find himself like he discovered this haven? Presenting the winner of the Amsel Moto Box Office 2 reality TV show, O.C. Ukeje. With Nollywood megastars Joker Silva and Rita Dominic in the sensational movie White Waters. White Waters, coming soon.
Um, I'm an amazing singer, if I do say so myself. Uh, <laughs> I write, but I don't write prose or sc screenplay or anything of the sort. It's more like poems and, you know, things like that. The highest point of my career so far, um, <laughs> it is really difficult to pick one, very difficult to pick one, because I've had um, points that have marked different seasons of my career. Um, and for one, winning a reality TV show was the start of it. Winning the Amas in 2008 was another episode. Winning the MVCs in 2012 was obviously a really good episode. And then um, doing Half of a Yellowstone as a film was also another impressive, you know, high point of my career. So it's hard to pick one of them because they have defined different seasons for me clearly, but I'll go with all four. <laughs> the news is not good. The house soldiers are close. I'm leaving for okay. Send word when you get to Omar. When I get a script, um, I usually have a notepad, but I'm becoming a bit more technology savvy now, <laughs> where I can make the notes on the script themselves as long as I'm on Adobe reading it. Um, sometimes it comes in words, so I usually have a notepad, you know, by my side just to make notes on what I think about the script as a whole and the scenes specifically. Um, I like to take as much time as I can to go through it and go through it in my head to, to pictorially represent what I'm seeing, you know, in print, um, just so I see how achievable certain things are. Because I find that there are also some scripts that you are very interested in, but you have to be honest about yourself about if they're achievable here in Nigeria, given the circumstances that we go through in filmmaking. Um, so yeah, I, I make sure that I have a jotter beside me and a pen, you know, just to put notes down or leave notes on the script, just the first thing I do. Show Yemi how to get a girlfriend. Ah. He doesn't know how to talk to girls. Sexy lady! Who's this? My name is Ikudaisi, but you can call me Daisy, baby. <laughs> Move, man. We don't speak to people who can't talk English. Do you know him? No. I think that I have been nervous on sets before. Um, whether as an upstart or as a working actor. And I know that for my first film, I mean, I had the advantage of working with uh, Joker Silva before my first film. So she was anti J to me already, so it was okay. But you're nervous because it's your first film and you have to make it work, otherwise this is a career that is going to plunge. Um, and then I think I was also nervous when I found that I was working with Rita Dominic. And the thing is, I did not get advance notice to prepare my nerves. It just happened that on day one of shoot, I had not seen who the female lead was. And then we step out and then she emerges. I'm like, okay, you know. So I was nervous then. And then I think I've had um, a bit of nerves every time I'm working with an entirely new team. Um, especially because you you don't know what they can do. Most of the actors don't know what you can do. And the director has gone off the idea that you are some interesting actor and maybe has seen a few things you've done, but obviously has her own concerns about your execution and the project. So at the top of it, you're like, okay, let's hope that after this first take, they're like, I like that, I really, really like that. Sense of humor. You think it's all right? Well, I don't think it's all right. What's blame the time in it? It's not me. It's blame the, the time. time. I live in the times, Jamie. I love catchy, and come tomorrow, I will marry. I'm not interested in being your wife. Oh God. Ah! Consolidation of 2014 for me was getting married, um, because I guess. There must be some other responsible things to do in life, but there's nothing more responsible than taking, you know, a woman by your side and saying, yes, I think we can make this journey together. So for me, it was a consolidation of 2014, but 2014 was also a very good year as far as work goes because, um, I mean, nominations for AMVCA 2015 popped out and, you know, my name was sort of littered in there. 
for me, 2014 was very significant because it feels like if nobody took you seriously at any point in time, 2014 seemed to have said to people that, look, you know, it's important. 2014, I also signed with management um, that represents me across the globe, basically. And for me, that was important to be able to find people who represent your craft here and outside of Nigeria as well, because it's important to be able to push beyond that. I think I just ended it well with getting married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad that I'm still the actor that I am. Um, it's a difficult thing to find a woman who's comfortable with you playing physical roles. You know, and just to clear the air, people also think that we're having a good time when we're playing physical roles. Like, it's, ooh, enjoying themselves. But it's not always that easy. You know, especially because you must consider that, yeah, she may be good looking and whatnot, but first of all, she's a stranger. You don't know her from somewhere, and you're a stranger to her as well. Um, secondly, um, there's a cloud of witnesses in the room and you're supposed to make your most sensual face and, you know, and then if the director feels uncomfortable with something, you feel embarrassed, you know. And depending on the lens to which the director wants to take the details of the physical shots, you have to deal with that and a few other people in the room. And even if it's a close set, you're dealing with people like, you know, the DP, the director, there's still a few people in there. It's not easy. If you guys are shooting early hours of the morning and both of you have funky breaths as well, you know, so those things are not easy. They're not easy to bring your personal activity to on set. So that's just to clear the air, first of all. Um, but that being said, it's also difficult to find a woman who would accept you playing those kinds of roles as an actor, as a mainstream actor. So I really salute my wife for, you know, being comfortable with it, you know. Obviously, she does her checks and her balances, you know, but um, I'm still an actor. Shit, Einstein. You know, I make her sent a top guy for this job. I am a guy, yes, and I have the phone, yes, which should logically mean that I am the guy with the phone. Okay, make we talk back. I think the greatest fear of an actor who's true to his craft is not being better than your last job. Um, the, the challenge with being an actor in the system in which we are is getting to the point where you are complacent and satisfied and think that you have arrived. But when they put you in comparison with your counterparts in North America and in Europe, you will realize how much work we still have to do as an industry and as an individual. I think that until we're playing in the same ballpark, I don't think that we should be comparing Nollywood and Hollywood just yet. And I say this because there are many differences in the way that both industries work. I still think that we have not understood the necessity for ethics and structure that makes the business what it is supposed to be. And this is outside of figuring out a distribution angle to um, acting or the products that we churn out. I still think that um, we have an issue with understanding that ethics and structure are important to push this business to the level where we can begin to think about comparing both industries. Hollywood has many years ahead of us. Um, to begin with, they have tons and tons of cinemas, which really guarantees that to a large degree, if you churn out a product, you have some semblance of recouping. But we have, what, less than 20 cinemas in the whole of Nigeria of 170 million people. 
Fortunately, we have a few people who are beginning to invest in smaller cinemas and whatnot. And, you know, they're still building a couple more. So we're glad that the stakes are improving there, but it's not yet at the point. In comparison, no, let's not go there. I certainly intend to produce. Uh, directing is probably one of the scariest angles of production for me, especially movie production, because it is very technical. It is, um, it requires a level of bravado that I don't think that I have. And when it comes to, you know, throwing out your work for people to constructively criticize, those, th I mean, I respect people who can break down the parts of a film and then assemble it together again. So no, I, I won't touch directing, but producing I'm very interested in, um, especially because it gives you the opportunity to, you know, grow your own child, you know do your best to control every aspect of the growth and then um, be proud of what you have done. Uh, there are certain prices to pay for being a public figure. Uh, to begin with, I mean, there's the assumption that, you know, you are other people's property, you know. There's also the assumption that, you know, every time you're moving around, there's like a small bullion van in the boot of your car. Like everybody, hey, German, <laughs> happy weekend, sir. You know, everybody's saluting you and expecting that, you know, everywhere you park, somebody wants you to tip them or you go somewhere. Okay, you don't need to go. You know, so it's it's plenty sometimes because sometimes we really don't have, you know. And then um, there are also certain things that you just feel like you can't do again, you know. For example, I'm, I'm big on bully, like, I mean, bully dude, you know. But it, it's difficult for you to, you know, stop at certain places to buy a bully now. I mean, for example, today I had an experience. Um, I think that, practically speaking, you can get from one point to another sometimes just using a bike, you know, so that it will save you whatever hazard is happening at there. Mostly it's traffic. And I know that today I had to stop somewhere real quick and I had my car parked somewhere. Um, so I was like, you know what, I can just use a bike because if I take my car, there'll be nowhere to park. So I said, let me go back to my car and pick up some change. And I get there and I, I'm walking back and then there's this car on the road and then, oh, they open the door and some girls are like, oh, I see you, I see you. And I'm like, yeah, don't take a bike. Let's just walk, you know? So I resorted to walking instead of taking a bike. I like poetry. Great. I'll find you a publisher. Call it, uh... Nick. Blood and piss. Brilliant. What? When the ink in my veins pour forth a libation. My blood on paper. I'll tell the world my story, pissing on the very ground you tread. <laughs> The might of the state will crush you to pieces. Nothing you do or say will stop the truth. There are many of us. Mm. You cannot touch me. The world will cry foul. I have to watch my own movies. Uh, just because you need to see what you did if you like what you did, what you think you need to improve on, um, what you think you could have done better, and um, generally how the film looks, you know. So I have to watch my own films. But I think after the first time, it's, it's more difficult to, because you're just like, yeah, oh God, remove this thing, yeah, you know. Uh, yes, I cook, actually. I haven't cooked actively in a few years. I mean, I had to live alone at some point growing up. Um, and so I had to eat. So the things that I knew how to cook, I, you know, I cooked and the things that I was taught. I think the only thing I don't know how to cook is soup, really. But I don't care what you think about that, but I know how to cook, period. I just have not been active, simple and short. Uh, my best friend actor. Well, it's between Denzel Washington and Leonardo DiCaprio. My best indigenous would be, I think Ramsey is still on top of it for me. Um, even though Kenneth Uncle comes really close, really close. 
and female. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, it's hard. I will skip. Um, unfortunately, I have more of a bias for you know, foreign music. I mean, Two Faced Adibia is still number one for me, you know, because of the diversity of his own music and the need to always show that. And I obviously know that um, a lot of Nigerian actors have the diversity. Um, for me, that diversity is important. Rewind, select, update. Yeah, hey, OJB. Get a CV to understand our uh, common sense. Say now only Baba God to get the real power. And as you get a CV, I don't mind my business. That's why, that's why I never give another man yawa yawa. Stretch up my feet. Say I thank you, prayer. Then I brush up my teeth. It's time I take a shower and then I grab something to eat. Put on a piece of clothes and I step out into the street. Into the studio just to cook up some beats. Let us do the clock to make the people feel it. Make an honest living and I'm proud of our it. Making sure that all my mistakes are not repeat. Like I mind my own business and I don't give a shit. There was some of mine I don't have time to edit. Got to thank the Lord that he's done me upon his feet. Oh, praise the Lord, he give me power to defeat. Stone is set up to give me me. I try to farm it and I try to forget it. Everybody know that me too lazy to quit. Everybody know that me physically fit. People them know that me peaceful and cool. Even when I'm watching a film, either one of the songs that is like a sound score, music score, touches me like that. I bring out my phone and I use Shazam and I want to know what song that is. That's how serious music is for me while I'm watching films. So that diversity is important to me. It doesn't matter what the genre is, as long as I enjoy it and I feel it, you know, I like that. Um, but I think that obviously because generally the industry seems to have um, a commercial slant to it, um, it makes it difficult to enjoy a range, you know, of genres, you know. But um, yeah, so that's why there is, you know. What up, people? It's Saturday. That's what I'm talking about. The weekend is here. Let's go. I'm so happy today. My eldest son, he's been granted visa. He's coming to London today. Mom, where can I need a bigger place? Do I look like the Queen of England? You need to be happy that your brother is coming. <laughs> you have to buy new shoes, though. <laughs> Show Yemi how to get a girlfriend. He doesn't know how to talk to girls. Sexy ladies. Who's this? My name is Ikudaisi, but you can call me Daisy, baby. Move, man. We don't speak to people who can't talk English. You know him? No. Sometimes Armani, sometimes what? A little bit of respect. He could be called Kunta Kente for all I care. You all right? Yeah, you good. You got some nice legs. Yo, Yemi, stay away from my girl, bro. If you want more of that, you've got to show me what you're willing to do for me. You don't even like him. Hey, what's your problem? I like him. You're ashamed of your, your name. Ashamed of where you're from. Just leave me alone. When I wake up in the morning, I am Nigeria. When I'm brushing my teeth, I am Nigeria. When I'm eating my chicken, I am Nigeria. Hey, this guy! <laughs> hey, people. My name is OCUKJ, and this is my exclusive. Na, na, na.